Harry's Wife The Parallel Lives of the Children The Prince and Princess of Wales, as you know, have three children, George, Charlotte, and Louis, or Loose Cannon Louis, as I call him. Intermittently, you see pictures of the Waleses together. The children turning up at some of the events that have taken place as of late, but they're not splashed all over the tabloids. They're not regularly seen in magazines, and the paper talk about them is minimal. William is a normal, Catherine is an empath, and therefore they deal with their children with emotional empathy. When it comes to Archie and Lilibet, on the basis that you accept that they exist and they are the children of Harry and his wife, there is a different dynamic. Harry has emotional empathy for his children. Indeed, he's repeatedly spoken about the fact that he often wanted to be a father. Harry's wife, as a middle mid-range narcissist, believes that she cares for her children. She has the cognitive empathy for them. She understands about keeping them clean, bringing them up a particular way, and so on and so forth, feeding them, soothing them, although much of those activities will be delegated to staff because she is too important, because she'll be focused on other matters, and the heavy lifting is always left to other people, because she wants the minimum of effort as a mid-range narcissist. She'll put on the doting mum act in public, but behind the scenes will invariably leave it to other people. I've explained elsewhere the way that the narcissist regards children, and, for Harry's wife, they are simply appliances like anybody else in her fuel matrix that are there to be utilised by her for the pursuit of the prime aims. Interestingly, Hello has popped up, suggesting Prince Harry and Prince William's agreement on bringing up kids Archie, Lilibet, George, Charlotte and Louis within royal family. The Prince of Wales and the Duke of Sussex may live over 5,000 miles apart, but the way they are raising their kids is so similar. Rachel Avery writes, When Prince Harry and his wife Harry's wife stepped down as senior members of the royal family and relocated to America, they sought a very different life to the one they had in the United Kingdom. Harry and brother Prince William may have many differences of opinion, he broke my necklace, exacerbated by the Duke of Sussex tell-all spare, in which he laid open many family secrets, including alleged physical fights between himself and his brother. However, there is one area in which the pair are in agreement, the way in which they are bringing up their kids. Pausing there, they may be in agreement about the way that they are bringing up their children, and we'll see what that actually amounts to. But believe me, the practical application of that will prove difficult for Harry because of the interference and micromanagement of his wife. Both brothers benefited from their mum, Princess Diana's insistence that her royal sons were raised to live as normal a life as possible, and both William and Harry are on the same page when it comes to continuing her legacy with their own children. Here, are the major parallels with how William's three children, Prince George, Princess Harlot, and Princess Louis, and Harry's two children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet, are being brought up. Prince William and Princess Kate relocated to Adelaide Cottage in Windsor last summer, reportedly seeking a life away from the Goldfish Bowl of London. This gives their children a chance to roam a little more freely than they could in the city when they resided at apartment 1A inside Kensington Palace. This, of course, is being done because they have emotional empathy for their children. They want them to grow up and enjoy being children away from the intrusive world of the media. Prince Harry and Harry's wife have made no secret of the fact that they made their US move in order to live a more private life away from the spotlight, not happy with how the British press treated them when they lived in the UK. Now, although that's what they've stated, we know the hypocritical behaviour of Harry's wife is such that she has not lived in a private life at all. 
She has continued to ensure that she's thrust into our faces through the PR puff pieces, and, even as of late, she keeps getting papped when she's not particularly doing anything. That is not a private life. What she has done, of course, is keep the children largely hidden. There are a variety of reasons why that might be. For some, it's because the children don't actually exist and that actors are brought in. For others, it is simply the case that she limits their appearances because she wants to make them rare so that she can merchandise them. Either way, it all relates to this issue, control. She controls the appearances of the children because it enables her to assert control more widely over the public. The next parallel is apparently a rural upbringing. Both families have a strong connection to nature and the great outdoors, possibly due to William and Harry's many childhood years spent on outdoor pursuits at Balmoral. The Wales family often get stuck into bike riding, sailing, hiking and skiing with their children. Over in Monty Shitshow, the Sussex's estate is also perfectly positioned for them to embark on many outdoor activities, such as hilltop hiking. Their Netflix docuseries also showed other outdoor pastimes like feeding the chickens, playing football and touring their seemingly never-ending gardens. Well, that's something of a difference between a rural upbringing having a large back garden. Quality time with their kids is apparently the next parallel. As working royals, William and Kate have busy work schedules, but they try their best to work their official engagement schedule around school drop-off and pick-up where possible. Hello's royal reporter Emily Nash explains, Whenever possible, William and Kate time their engagements to allow them to take their children to school and put them to bed, even on tours. Similarly, Harry and Harry's wife have a focus on spending quality time with their kids. When the Duchess penned an open letter to members of the United States Congress in support of a comprehensive paid leave program for new parents, she revealed their dedication to raising their children. The Suits actress wrote in June, My husband and I welcomed our second child. Like any parents, we were overjoyed. Like many parents, we were overwhelmed. Like fewer parents, we weren't confronted with the harsh reality of either spending those first few critical months with our baby or going back to work. We knew we could take her home and in that vital and sacred stage devote any and everything to our kids and to our family. We knew that by doing so, we wouldn't have to make impossible choices about childcare, work and medical care so that many have to make every single day. Notice a big difference there? The Waleses demonstrate that focus on their children in terms of quality time by actually doing it. With Harry's wife, she writes about it, putting it on the world stage. And what happened with that parental leave plea? Square root of fuck all. The next parallel relates to the issue of a focus on manners. There is no doubt that the royal cousins will be brought up with the most impeccable manners. We've seen... Prince William recently prompted his youngest son, Prince Luce Cannon Louis, to shake hands with staff during a visit to the Royal International Air Tattoo in Fairford. In Harry's wife's interview with The Cut, she revealed that manners were also a key parenting focus for them. Alison joined the family on the school run and wrote, during the ride, she wrote, If he, Archie, forgets to say please or thank you, Harry's wife reminds him of the manners that make the man. Notice again, however, that it's all about demonstrating to the world that she behaves this way through facade management rather than actual action. Hilariously, the last thing that Hello drags up in this further PR puff piece to demonstrate that the Sussexes are bringing up their children just like the Waleses is this, sweet family time with grandparents. Both the Wales children and the Sussex kids are fortunate enough to have their grandparents around to help. Really? Carol and Michael Middleton live really close to William and Kate in nearby Berkshire, and so they are heavily involved in raising the young royals. It is believed the three children also spend time with King Charles and step-grandmother Queen Camilla. Harry's wife's mother, Doria Ragland, also plays a major part in her grandchildren's life, as was evident in the Netflix show, again, facade management, when we saw her join in with lots of family fun. However, given their location, Archie and Lilibet do not get to visit their UK grandparents often. It's fuck all to do with location and everything to do with the assertion of control by Harry's wife. Notice that references made to both branches of the Waleses family, the Middletons and the Windsors, 
Whereas, with Harry's wife, it's just Doria Ragland. Thomas Markle, Samantha Markle, Thomas Markle Jr. don't even get mentioned in this article. Why? Because Harry's wife has disengaged from them. This entire article is character trait acquisition and facade management. The Waleses are praised for the way that they deal with their children. They receive repeated commendation for the interactions that they have, the way that they don't use them, and the behaviour of the children when they are seen. This infuriates Harry's wife. Therefore, in order to demonstrate that her family is just like the wonderful Waleses, she ensures that articles such as this are published to draw the parallels. And it is quite simply nonsense because there are no parallels for the reasons that I've outlined to you, and this is just an exercise in facade management and character trait acquisition. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.